All right, hello everybody and welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to set up, track, and use Time in Lou in Zero. So Time in Lou, for those who don't know, is basically a form of accrual, kind of similar to annual leave, but rather than having a set alloca allocation that you accrue over a period of time, it is when an employee works, for example, an extra day in their pay week, in their normal pay cycle, and then they get a day off and get paid for it in the following week or whenever they want to pick up that time in lieu. So um, they get to transfer that work that was completed in one period of time and get paid for it in a future period or take time off in its place. So let's go have a look at our employee list. And we'll work off the weekly calendar here and we can see we have Odette Garrison. Let's go have a look at her employee file. And we're going to go to the leave tab. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to set up time in lieu as a leave category. And usually when an employee starts, if they're a full timer or a part timer, so they're accruing benefits, you'll assign the default leave types and that would bring on the annual leave and it would normally bring on the personal sick leave as well. It's just those two types, annual leave and sick leave. It won't bring on the time in lieu, you have to set that up manually. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to set up time in lieu. And if we scroll somewhere, where is it? Often it will already be on your drop down list here, but we can see there is no leave category for time in lieu. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to go and create that leave category. So I'm going to go duplicate this screen and we're going to go to the payroll settings. And we're going to go to pay items. And we're going to click on leave. And we can see here, there's nothing here for time in lieu. So we're going to add that. And we'll pick this one here, time off in lieu. If you're going to exempt it from super, you would tick that. We're gonna leave that blank and we're going to tick to say that it shows on payslip. Okay, so we've set it up. We'll go back to Odette now and we'll do a refresh. And we're going to click on assign leave type. And we should be able to find time in lieu. There it is. That's the category we just created. Leave calculation method. Because time in lieu isn't something that accrues automatically, like annual leave and sick leave, we're going to click no calculation required because it doesn't accrue. We're only just going to uh, record for it when it happens, when that employee happens to work that extra time that will be classified as time in lieu. Opening balance zero, we'll say that it's paid out and we'll say that it includes superannuation guarantee and we'll save that. Now that is set up. We can see here we've got the time in lieu zero hours. If we go to do a pay run now, so we'll go over to this tab and we'll go pay employees and Odette is on the weekly calendar so we'll select the weekly calendar the next one being week ending 21st of April and there she is so what happens is we'll have a look at what she's got here on a pay slip she's worked 35 hours that's what she's done in this period and got some bonuses and other things but in this particular period, we're going to say that she actually worked an extra five hours on top of her 35 hours. And rather than getting paid out as overtime or as at a regular rate, it's going to go to time in lieu. She's arranged with her boss to have it as time in lieu so that she can take that five hours off in a future period and get paid for it, even though she didn't work in that future period. So down the bottom here, we're going to do an accrual, a manual accrual. And we're gonna scroll down, we're going to select time in lieu. 
and we're going to say that she worked five hours extra as time in lieu. So we'll save that. So in total, she worked 35 hours plus an extra five hours that goes to time in lieu. So she worked 40 hours, but five of that is going to time in lieu and she's been paid for 35. Now let's post this pay run. If we now go back to her pay card here, her employee card, we'll do a refresh and this time in lieu should go to five hours. There it is, and that will show on her pay slip as well. Now, let's say in the next period, which would be the week ending the 28th of April, she worked five hours less, but she took up the five hours of time in lieu. So what we're going to have to do, I'll just queue up the pay period here. So it's the week ending the 28th of April. So we have to put in a leave request and it's going to be time in lieu. Time in lieu, week ending, what was it, 28th of April. And we'll change the dates here. So you can set the date for anything within that week cycle, being the 28th, week ending the 28th, so anywhere from the 22nd to the 28th. I normally just put it as the last day and then you know it's gonna work. It doesn't really matter, as long as you set it for a day that's within that current week period, being the week ending the 28th. So she used five hours of time in lieu for this week, and we're going to approve that leave request. So now you can see the time in lieu balance has gone back down to zero because she's used up that five hours. Now we have to process it in the pay run. Let's do that. And as we can see here, she worked the five hours less. It was normally 35. We saw that from the pre previous pay run. That's gone down to 30 because she only worked 30, not 35, but she took up the five in time in lieu. So in theory, what should happen is she should get the same pay as she normally does, but she only worked 30 hours instead of 35 hours. But then in the previous week, she actually worked 40 hours instead of 35. So it all balances out. And we're going to save that. There's no accrual down here because you didn't work any extra hours that were going to be classified as time in lieu. So we're happy with that. And we'll post the pay run. Let's go back and have a look at the two pay weeks and see if her pay changed. It is a little bit different. The tax is slightly different, as we can see there. Let's have another look at that. So she's got pay on schedule five, pay on schedule four. And we'll open up the previous week and we'll compare them to see what the difference is in tax. So there is a slight difference there for the tax on Schedule 5, it was $104. It's gone up to $156 because of the time in loot. You can adjust that. So you can adjust that back down so that her net pay is the same as it was in the previous week, which was 2239. You could adjust, do a manual adjustment on the tax so her pay remains 2239. Or if you just leave it as is, she'll get that back in her tax return. All right, so that's it for the video, guys. If you'd like to book in a training session, head over to qtraining.net.au. There's a button up in the top right-hand corner that says book a session. You can book an online training session. We'll show you whatever you need to go through, be it Zero, be it Myob, be it Excel, be it QuickBooks, whatever you're wanting help with, we can help you with it. We've also got a bunch of other videos up on YouTube, so you can head over to our channel page if you want to have a look at that. Other than that, guys, thanks a lot for watching the video, and we'll see you next time.